and I now give the floor to Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Barbados, on behalf of the small island developing states. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for Barbados to deliver this statement on behalf of the small island developing states. I will be delivering an abridged version, but the entire statement will be made available to the Secretariat. At the outset, SID would like to take the opportunity to recognize the UNISDR and the Bureau for the work in preparing for the Third World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, and to thank the co-chairs for their work. The issue of disaster risk reduction is one in which our countries consider, one which our countries consider to be of critical importance to our sustainable development and to the continued existence of our islands. We therefore have a vested interest in ensuring that the post-2015 framework on disaster risk reduction supports the inclusion of various shareholders, builds on the achievements, priorities, and gaps in the Hyogo framework for action. Co-chairs, though we subscribe to the notion that it is the role of government to ensure a country's sustainable development, we would like to highlight that our countries contribute least to climate change induced or catalyzed risks which affect our peoples and their livelihoods. We therefore welcome the role played by our development partners in assisting in sharing this burden and urge continued and sustained efforts. Small island developing states continue to be on the front line of disaster risk and impacts of climate change. Such disasters have the ability to ultimately stifle our progress towards sustainable development. However, with respect to the means of implementation, many small island developing states remain significantly challenged. The global economic situation has not been particularly favorable for many of our economies, and in recent years, Many SIDS have been elevated to the list of highly indebted countries in the world, many of whom are excluded from concessional financing. SIDS continue to reiterate that gross domestic product per capita, the sole indicator by which such assistance is usually granted, is not an adequate measure as it does not take into consideration the peculiar vulnerabilities which are faced by SIDS. In this regard, we stress the need for a structure which would ensure that all SIDS are able to access critical resources for disaster risk reduction and resilience building activities. Though we appreciate that the United Nations Trust Fund for Disaster Risk Reduction should be reviewed with a view to expanding its usage and feasibility to include the set of national strategies, we also think that the scope should be such as to assist vulnerable countries such as SIDS with the implementation of the post-2015 framework, including through developing plans for securing and safeguarding the transition of livelihood and catering for migration due to climatic hazards, financing infrastructure preparedness and mitigation projects, development and implementation of strong disaster risk reduction and disaster risk management and recovery policies and frameworks. Cooperation at the regional and global levels is a crucial part of ensuring that disaster risk reduction is instituted in and across countries and borders. Collaboration at the regional level, which enhances national and regional preparedness and response collaboration projects, such as the development and implementation of early warning systems, urban search and rescue teams, simulation exercises, increasing and sustained knowledge management and learning in comprehensive disaster management are important for catering for our needs. Cooperation with international organizations, which could strengthen advocacy for the enactment of new pieces of legislation, 
is one of the additional areas which could be considered for inclusion in the framework. This could support the development of enhancement of existing ones, for example, international disaster response law in collaboration with the International Federation of the Red Cross. In the, path, in the SIDS pathway document, the international community committed to supporting the efforts of SIDS in disaster risk reduction in light of our, and I quote, unique and particular vulnerabilities. In this regard, SIDS, as was the case in the HF, HFA, proposed the inclusion of specific language in the post-2015 framework to, quote, implement the outcome of the small island developing states accelerated modalities of action or the Samoa pathway, particularly in the area of disaster risk reduction, end of quote. Co-chairs, we would, however, like to note the need for continued support for the assistance of SIS to attend these meetings. We, of course, acknowledge the support we have had in the past, and we urge that our group continues to be granted such assistance. Given our limited time over the next few days, SIDS recommend that we focus on achieving as much common ground as possible during this preparatory committee meeting. In this regard, SIDS remain willing and ready to actively engage in negotiations on the zero draft of the post-2015 framework on disaster risk reduction and wish us all a fruitful and productive meeting. Uh, in closing, I just wish to remind that the full statement will, has been made available for inclusion in the record of this meeting. I thank you. I thank Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Barbados.